Well, alright. It has been one month since the DMAA game has been released. I did talk about it already in our super hot blockage informational video, which was made as a result of what took place, but regardless. The launch did not go as planned and I was not prepared for what happened. I theorized that as a heavy clickbait game, the only option would be to hit and run, pour all funds into ads and hope we get to a high number of concurrent players before they realize what's going on. That didn't quite occur. Instead, the player growth was rather slow, but they stayed in the game for very long periods of time while managing to make quite a bit of Robux revenue. Unfortunately, as I threw everything into the initial advertisements and was not prepared for Roblox's long sales validation process, I had to look for funds elsewhere to sustain the unexpected player interest and profitability. I experimented with different ad types and styles, making small updates to the game every few days, changing thumbnails and game icons, the usual. The game did not do as well as I would have hoped, but the constant revenue and player base were beyond my expectations. Still, to the point. The premise of this whole series was what I voiced in the first episode, that is, and I'll quote myself, Sure, you are not nearly guaranteed success if you make shitty content, but you have much better chances with making shitty content that happens to be popular than if you took the harder path and tried doing something of a higher quality instead of harping on trends and fandoms. That, for the record, is a very bad sentence. I don't know what I was doing, I probably did not have the time to go over the script and refine it. I usually write long sentences that I myself get lost in afterwards, but here the thought structure is just awful. Well, it boils down to, is it more rewarding to make trendy garbage than to put effort into original content? Well, I don't want to disappoint anyone. If you've got any idealistic underage children in the room or are one yourself, you might want to shield their eyes now. Probably ears too. Optimally both. Here is the conclusion of this series. Yes. As in, yes to that question. It's more rewarding to make trendy garbage than to put effort into original content. Yes. It's something everyone has to realize sooner or later in most areas of creative activity, and even more so with Roblox game development. Just to give you a reference point, I did run a series before this one where, in short, I tried making a superior version of the classic Roblox obstacle course game genre. Not saying that one was the peak of game dev brilliance, but it even got featured by Roblox, so it got to be at least okay, right? In the first month, that game got 33,379 visitors, who generated the revenue of 7,416 Robux. The DMAA game, in comparison, is much more aggressively monetized, which allowed for more revenue, which enabled more aggressive advertising. In the first month, the so-called Abomination got over 320,000 visits, and made 456,346 Robux, a portion of which was understandably pulled back to its promotion, but regardless, the difference is hopefully apparent. It's not a very happy ending, is it? When making this series, I really thought we might get to maybe a thousand concurrent players while exhausting our resources and that be it. I expected the game to be popular for a time, but not successful. And here we are, what can I say? It works, it's more reliable, more sustainable, more profitable, requires less time, but you shouldn't do it because... Be, because... It, uh, it's not good for the overall game quality and platform's health. And yes, I know this is even supported by Roblox themselves because it's also more profitable for them, but you should not do it because uh, if they have no sense, it falls on you, the user, to be reasonable and save the whole site by making underrated, unknown games. 
I mean, damn, I don't know how can I make this sound positive. So that's why I uploaded this a few days ago. I do not want to use DevX. Sure, I might not even be able to, given my clear record of causing no problems ever. But even if I could, I don't want to DevX from this. I still have standards. Instead, Blockage, the Vans development group, now development group again, hosting the game, will use the funds to support smaller unheard of games. By today, we already put out something called Wreckball Survival, a pretty neat old school esque survival place with uh, balls. Before, it had about 60 visits, now it has over 30,000. It's not breathtaking, but it's something, and we don't intend to stop. The clear blockage profit on this game so far is about negative 43,000 Robux. Is it business savvy? <laughs> no, but at least this way the developer gets some exposure and a few thousand of the game's revenue. Sure, he could get way more if we just directly gave him what we put into ads instead, but where's the fun in that? The Abomination game can very well pull this kind of expense, and this way it at least feels like the MAA was good for something. So, that is that. I will make some summary about the spooky DMAA fueled blockage activities monthly and whenever something noteworthy occurs, till the end of this year for sure, or until we disband. Dayren makes an abomination, however, ends here. So, yeah. It's been okay, I guess. Thank you for your interest and safe travels through the internet.